Are you constantly feeling frustrated, irritated, or overwhelmed? Do you find yourself struggling to stay calm and composed in challenging situations? In this video, we delve into the profound teachings of Buddhism to discover how you can cultivate patience and transform your life. Let's learn how to be patient in our lives the Buddhist way. Lesson 1. Practice Mindfulness and Meditation Mindfulness is the practice of being fully present and engaged in the current moment, acknowledging our thoughts, feelings, and sensations without judgment. It's about paying attention to the present moment rather than dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. This practice helps us to stay grounded and not get carried away by our thoughts or emotions, thus fostering patience. To practice mindfulness, start by focusing on your breath. Feel the sensation of the air entering and leaving your body. If your mind wanders, gently bring it back to your breath. This simple act of focusing on your breath can help to calm your mind and bring you into the present moment. Meditation, on the other hand, is a practice of concentration, leading to a calm and tranquil mind. It's a tool that helps us to achieve mindfulness. In Buddhism, meditation is used to cultivate awareness, compassion, and understanding. It's a practice of quieting the mind, letting go of thoughts and distractions, and focusing on the present moment. There are many forms of meditation in Buddhism, but all share the common goal of cultivating a calm and peaceful mind. One of the most common forms of meditation is Samatha, or Tranquility Meditation. This involves focusing on a single object, such as the breath, a mantra, or a visual image, to calm the mind and develop concentration. Another form of meditation is Vipassana, or Insight Meditation. This involves observing the breath, body, thoughts, and feelings with a non-judgmental awareness. The goal is to gain insight into the true nature of reality and develop wisdom and understanding. Regular practice of mindfulness and meditation can help us cultivate patience. It teaches us to stay present, even in difficult situations, and to respond with calm and understanding, rather than reacting out of frustration or impatience. It helps us to see things as they truly are, without the distortion of our thoughts and emotions. Mindfulness and meditation help us to develop compassion and understanding for ourselves and others. They teach us to see that we are all interconnected and that our actions have an impact on others. This understanding can help us to be more patient and compassionate in our interactions with others. Lesson 2. Practice Positive Self-Talk The way we speak to ourselves can greatly influence our ability to be patient. In Buddhism, right speech is one of the Eightfold Paths to Enlightenment. This includes the way we speak to ourselves. Instead of berating ourselves when things don't go as planned, we can practice positive self-talk. Positive self-talk involves speaking to ourselves in a kind, supportive, and encouraging manner. It's about replacing negative self-talk with positive affirmations, reminding ourselves of our strengths and capabilities, and reframing challenging situations as opportunities for growth. One of the key principles of Buddhism is the concept of impermanence. The idea that everything in life is temporary and constantly changing. This principle can be applied to our practice of positive self-talk. When we find ourselves feeling impatient or frustrated, we can remind ourselves, this too shall pass. I am capable of handling this situation with patience and calm. Another important aspect of positive self-talk is self-compassion. In Buddhism, Self-compassion is seen as a fundamental aspect of spiritual growth. It involves treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a dear friend. When we make a mistake or encounter a setback, instead of berating ourselves, we can say, I am doing the best I can. It's okay to make mistakes. I will learn and grow from this experience. Positive self-talk also involves cultivating a sense of gratitude. Gratitude helps us to appreciate the present moment rather than always striving for more or dwelling on what's missing in our lives. By focusing on what we're grateful for, we can cultivate a sense of contentment and peace, which in turn fosters patience. To practice gratitude, take a few moments each day to reflect on what you're thankful for. 
It could be something as simple as a warm cup of tea, a beautiful sunset, or a kind word from a friend. By focusing on these positive aspects of our lives, we can shift our mindset from one of lack to one of abundance. Positive self-talk also involves cultivating a sense of acceptance. Acceptance means acknowledging things as they are, without judgment or resistance. When we practice acceptance, we can let go of our need to control or change things, which often leads to impatience and frustration. To practice acceptance, try saying to yourself, things are as they are. I cannot control everything. I accept this situation as it is, and I choose to respond with patience and calm. Remember, dear friends, that positive self-talk is a practice. It takes time and effort to retrain our minds to think positively. But with consistent practice, we can transform our mental garden, cultivating patience, resilience, and inner peace. Buddha said, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. Let us strive to think positively, speak kindly to ourselves, and cultivate a mind of patience and peace. Lesson 3. Be patient with yourself. Patience is a virtue that takes time to cultivate. It's important to be patient with yourself as you navigate this journey. Remember, the path to enlightenment is not a race, but a journey to be savored. Being patient with oneself is about accepting that growth and change are gradual processes. It's about understanding that we are not perfect and that it's okay to make mistakes. It's about giving ourselves the time and space to learn, grow, and improve. One way to cultivate self-patience is by setting realistic expectations. Often, we set unrealistic goals for ourselves and become frustrated when we fail to meet them. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. Instead, set achievable goals and celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Remember, every step forward is a step towards becoming a more patient person. When you make a mistake or find yourself becoming impatient, don't berate yourself. Instead, acknowledge your feelings, offer yourself comfort, and remind yourself that it's okay to make mistakes. By focusing on the present moment, we can become more aware of our thoughts and feelings. This can help us to recognize when we are becoming impatient and give us the opportunity to take a step back and respond in a more patient and compassionate way. Everything in life is temporary and constantly changing, including our thoughts, feelings, and circumstances. By accepting this truth, we can learn to let go of our expectations and embrace the present moment with patience and acceptance. Remember, the journey towards patience is not a linear one. There will be ups and downs, moments of progress and moments of setback. But each moment, each experience, offers an opportunity to learn, grow, and cultivate patience. So, be patient with yourself. Give yourself the time and space to grow. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Treat yourself with kindness and compassion. And remember, the journey towards patience is a journey towards a more peaceful, fulfilled, and enlightened life. In the words of the Buddha, you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So be patient with yourself, love yourself, and remember that every step you take, no matter how small, is a step towards becoming a more patient person. Lesson 4. Keep a log of your triggers. Understanding our triggers is a crucial step in cultivating patience. Triggers are situations, behaviors, or emotions that provoke a reaction within us, often leading to feelings of impatience or frustration. By keeping a log of these triggers, we can begin to recognize patterns, understand our reactions, and develop strategies to manage them effectively. Start by creating a simple log or journal. This could be a physical notebook, a digital document, or even a note-taking app on your phone. The key is to choose a method that is convenient and accessible for you. Each time you feel impatient, take a moment to jot down the details of the situation. What was happening? Who were you with? What were you feeling? Try to be as specific as possible. For example, instead of writing traffic made me impatient, you might write, I felt impatient when I was stuck in traffic for 20 minutes on my way to work. Over time, 
you may start to notice patterns emerging. Perhaps you feel most impatient when you're hungry or tired. Maybe certain people or situations consistently trigger your impatience. These insights can be invaluable in helping you to understand and manage your reactions. Once you've identified your triggers, you can start to develop strategies to manage them. For example, if you find that hunger often leads to impatience, you might make a point of carrying healthy snacks with you. If certain people trigger your impatience, you might practice mindfulness and compassion, reminding yourself that everyone is doing the best they can with the resources they have. Remember, the goal is not to avoid our triggers, but to learn to respond to them in a more patient and compassionate way. By keeping a log of your triggers, you're taking an important step towards understanding yourself better and cultivating patience. It's also important to note that this process should be approached with self-compassion. We all have triggers, and it's perfectly okay to feel impatient at times. The key is to use these moments as opportunities for growth and learning, rather than as evidence of failure or inadequacy. Buddha said, You will not be punished for your anger, you will be punished by your anger. By understanding and managing our triggers, we can free ourselves from the grip of anger and impatience and cultivate a more peaceful and compassionate approach to life. Lesson 5. Put yourself in situations to test your patience. Challenge yourself by deliberately putting yourself in situations that test your patience. This could be anything from helping a child with their homework to waiting in a long queue. Start by identifying situations that you usually avoid due to impatience. It could be anything from dealing with a difficult colleague, navigating a crowded market, or even learning a new skill that requires time and practice. Once you've identified these situations, make a conscious effort to engage in them. If you find yourself losing patience while dealing with a difficult colleague, instead of avoiding them, take the opportunity to engage with them. Listen to their perspective, try to understand their point of view, and respond with kindness and calm. This not only helps to cultivate patience, but also fosters better relationships and understanding. If you find yourself getting impatient while learning a new skill, instead of giving up, take it as an opportunity to practice patience. Remember, every expert was once a beginner. It's okay to make mistakes and take time to learn. In fact, this is a perfect opportunity to practice mindfulness and positive self-talk, as discussed in our previous lessons. Navigating a crowded market or a busy street can also be a good opportunity to practice patience. Instead of getting frustrated with the crowd, take a deep breath and focus on the present moment. Observe the hustle and bustle around you, listen to the sounds, and feel the energy of the place. This can be a fascinating experience if we approach it with the right mindset. Remember, the goal here is not to endure these situations, but to engage with them mindfully and patiently. It's about shifting our perspective and seeing these situations not as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth and learning. It's also important to note that while it's beneficial to challenge ourselves, we should also be mindful of our limits. If a situation is causing excessive stress or anxiety, it's okay to step back and take a break. The key is to find a balance between challenging ourselves and taking care of our mental health. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. So, Let's shape our thoughts with patience, understanding, and kindness. Let's embrace challenges as opportunities for growth and learning. And let's strive to become the best versions of ourselves, one patient step at a time. Lesson 6. Work on becoming a good listener. Listening is a powerful tool in cultivating patience. When we truly listen to others, we are present in the moment focused on understanding their perspective rather than rushing to respond. To become a good listener, start by giving the speaker your undivided attention. Put aside distractions, such as your phone or other tasks, and focus on the person speaking. This act of mindfulness shows respect for the speaker and their words, and it helps to cultivate patience. Practice active listening. This involves not just hearing the words, but also understanding the message. Pay attention to the speaker's tone, body language, and emotions. Try to see things from their perspective, even if you disagree with their viewpoint. 
This practice of empathy can help to foster patience and understanding. Avoid interrupting the speaker. Interrupting can make the speaker feel rushed or unheard, which can lead to frustration and conflict. Instead, allow the speaker to finish their thoughts before responding. This practice of restraint can help to cultivate patience. When it's your turn to speak, respond thoughtfully to what the speaker has said. Acknowledge their feelings and viewpoint, even if you disagree. This shows that you have been listening and that you value their input. It also helps to maintain a calm and peaceful conversation. Remember, the goal of listening is not just to gather information, but to connect with others and understand their experiences. By becoming a good listener, you can cultivate patience, empathy, and compassion. The Buddha taught, one who, while himself seeking happiness, oppresses with violence other beings who also desire happiness, will not attain happiness hereafter. In the same vein, one who seeks to be heard but does not listen to others will not find understanding or connection. Listening is a skill that takes time and practice to develop. Be patient with yourself as you work on becoming a good listener. Remember, every moment is an opportunity to practice mindfulness, empathy, and patience. In the words of the Buddha, speak or act with a pure mind and happiness will follow you as your shadow, unshakable. May you find happiness and peace as you cultivate patience through listening. Lesson 7. Reflect on the Outcome Reflecting on the outcome of our actions and reactions is a crucial step in cultivating patience. It is an opportunity for us to learn, grow, and deepen our understanding of the world and ourselves. To practice reflection, start by finding a quiet and comfortable space. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Then, bring to mind a recent situation where you either practiced patience or gave in to impatience. Observe the situation as if you were a detached spectator. What were the circumstances? How did you feel? How did you react? What was the outcome? Remember, the purpose of this exercise is not to judge or criticize yourself, but to gain a deeper understanding of the role that patience plays in your life. If you practice patience, reflect on how it affected the situation. Did it help to calm the situation? Did it lead to a more favorable outcome? How did it make you feel? Did you feel a sense of peace, calm, and contentment? These positive outcomes and feelings can serve as a source of motivation and encouragement. They remind us of the value of patience and inspire us to continue cultivating this virtue. If you gave in to impatience, reflect on how it affected the situation. Did it escalate the situation? Did it lead to a less favorable outcome? How did it make you feel? Did you feel a sense of regret, frustration, or dissatisfaction? These negative outcomes and feelings can serve as a source of learning and growth. They highlight the consequences of impatience and provide us with insights on how we can better manage our impatience in the future. For instance, if you realize that your impatience often leads to misunderstandings and conflicts, you might decide to practice active listening or take a few moments to calm down before responding. In addition to reflecting on specific situations, you can also reflect on your overall progress in cultivating patience. Are you more patient than you were before? Are you better at managing your triggers? Are you more understanding and compassionate towards yourself and others? Remember, progress is not always linear. There will be ups and downs, moments of success and moments of setback. But as long as you are committed to the journey, as long as you are willing to learn and grow, you will make progress. In the words of the Buddha, do not dwell in the past, do not dream of the future, concentrate the mind on the present moment. Reflection is not about dwelling on the past, but about learning from it. It is about using our past experiences to guide and inform our present actions and future growth.